That's right. We got an explosive offense facing a pitching staff that is says up for the test. Gage Miller hitting 460 begins on the right side. He sees a pitch wide out of the hand of Cole Boswell for a ball, and we are underway. Boswell tries to run a two-seamer over. That one doesn't get onto the plate, and he's quickly in a 2-0 hole to Gage Miller. Miller, the eight home runs on this season, 24 RBIs. He paces this ball club in homers. And that's saying something. It's a club that's hit 30 home runs to this point through 16 ball games. And Boswell doesn't connect over the plate on four pitches. Gage Miller takes a walk. His fifth walk of this season. Joshua Gilreath back behind the plate, showing a tight strike zone early. And Cole Boswell on the bump, trying to get over with a strike here to the two-hole McCants. Swinging a miss from McCants. The senior out of Florida, center fielder, a dynamic defensive player. Gap-to-gap -gap kind of guy. He has played here at Pete Taylor Park before. He was a former Ole Miss Rebel. He rips one in the middle. Gillespie, who's going to throw it up to Pratt, who applies the tag. 3-6 double play. Pitcher's best friend for Cole Boswell. Yeah, Jason, that's a unique throw for the first baseman. Um, great job by Gillespie to be able to handle the inside track on the ground ball. Little ground to cover back to first base, but to make that throw on the money, I see there there's a little room as far as having room to throw it to second base. Sometimes you don't have quite that much room, but Gillespie made it look easy there and got the pitcher's best friend in the double play. Boy, the ball will find you, won't it? As a defensive player, you're making another start at a new position. He was an incoming third baseman. Gillespie has been tried out in left field, but the emergence of Billy Butler has really allowed there to be some shuffling amongst this Golden Eagle defense. He had preliminarily ahead of the season began to work some at first base as they thought there may would be some opportunities there. As you see, Boswell comes with the change jump into Ian Petrutz. That's right. You try to get reps out there uh, pre-practice, pre-game, uh, I think it was Coach Danny Lynch's job to get down there a couple, maybe a half an hour before each practice over the last two or three weeks and just pepper him with ground balls in different situations on how to cover up and some footwork stuff. We had a nice glove on that hot shot from T.J. McCants. Another walk from Boswell as Petrutz takes a walk down to first base. So another base runner for the Crimson Tide. Boswell's been a guy, only four walks on this season to nine Ks. That's across six innings of work. He has sort of been an opener role in these last couple of midweek starts, a two-inning outing against Nichols, two and two-thirds against Mississippi State as he spots his fastball to Evan Slight in for a strike. That's right, Jason. These midweek ball games, a lot of times you get a guy out there if he's if he's going good and rolling and eating up outs and innings, it's a great thing, but it's also a time for different arms to get some reps and to get some innings and get some work in on the mound. Another wicked change up out of the hand of Cole Boswell at 77 miles per hour, slight right over the top of it. The team captain hitting 322 for Alabama on this young season. 0-2 pitch and another one. Change up again. Here we go in Hattiesburg. Get you that Alabama Crimson Tide defense right after this pitch as you see Dalton McIntyre show that bunch. T.J. McCants, he's as advertised, Chris, gap to gap. That's right, a guy who's, who's very familiar. He's no stranger to Mississippi baseball either. The former Ole Miss Rebel as Zane Adams comes with a fastball at 92 to Dalton McIntyre to put him at an 0-2 hole here. There you see the big bender. That was an 80 mile per hour breaking ball out of Zane Adams' hand. McIntyre, the junior Tennessee native. One two pitch on the way. 
McIntyre sends this one down the left field line, foul and out of play. That's what Dalton has done on this season so far. You see that 921 OPS on base percentage plus slugging. You folks at home who wanting to know what OPS is. One two pitch, big breaking ball misses down and away. Five left handed bats in the Golden Eagle lineup against the lefty today. 2 2, McIntyre sends this one fouling out of play. Coach Vaughn said he wanted specifically to put Zane Adams in this kind of environment on the road, on the bump, in a hostile environment to see how he would handle it. 2 2, hanging breaking ball. McIntyre shoots this one. Fouling out of play again. Working on a quality at bat to kind of see what Zane's going to go to off speed wise. To be able to see six plus pitches is a quality at bat for this ball club. And so far, that's what McIntyre's done. 2 2 shoots it down into the bullpen, sends them scattering down in the bullpen club and the bullpen alike. And a souvenir for a youngster. He'll get to keep that one. The fastball from Zane Adams at 92 is what McIntyre just shot over there towards the left side. 2-2 pitch, another fastball. Nope, change up at 84. Trouble. McIntyre can run. That was a tough play either way for Will Hodo. Turf kind of helps you there and gets the high bounce. A guy like McIntyre can take advantage of it and rush the defense because of his incredible speed out of the left-handed batter's box. Arguably the fastest Golden Eagle on this roster. See Will Hodo coming up. That was going to have to be a do or die kind of play on a short hop. You see Hodo there, another guy who's no stranger to Mississippi baseball from Waynesboro, Mississippi and Wayne Academy High. Nick Monastere, the two position hitter tonight for the Golden Eagles. He stands in. He's a pitch down below his knees. And JB, to your point about the Crimson Tide getting on the road, besides a neutral, uh, a neutral site, out in Frisco, in correct? In Frisco, three games set. These guys have played one road game, and that was at UAB out of their first 16 games. So they go back home and get to host Tennessee to open up SEC play next weekend. But this is a scenario for these young guys like this arm on the mound to be able to feel the heat a little bit. Yeah, and Coach Vaughn said with all due respect to UAB, as you see Monastere, hot shot over to Gage Miller, who gets one at two. The throw over to first, not in time. They can't go 4-3 to put out Monastere for the DP. Tough to come all the way around the horn there. And Monastere does what he needs to do and beat out that attempted double play. So Slade Wilkes stands in, takes a strike here. The senior out of Columbia, Mississippi. He is beginning to heat up. That is fantastic news if you watch these broadcasts with black and gold glasses on. Yeah, I'd say Wilkes at bats in Ruston against Louisiana Tech looked a lot more calm. Ground ball. Is getting to him. Bryce Eblen going to shoot it up to second. That is in time to get Nick Monastere. Monastere saying maybe take a look. That was Justin LeBron who was coming over to toe tap to second base. Something made Monastere believe he beat this throw. Routine play, so it's a little difficult to believe that, but I think maybe Monastere believes the throw might have pulled him off the bag. That's clearly what he's got to be thinking, is that his foot's coming off the bag. Well, there was a drag there with his right foot. At first glance, it looked like he was off. It looks like he tried to drag it there. Very nonchalant, however, you can see Monastere immediately kind of put those arms out. Of course, I haven't seen a base runner yet that doesn't think he's safe. That's right. On the base pass, and I guess that's sort of what you're 
you're taught to do. Boy, when you really slow it down, you, you can see Monaster. his foot is, it appears like it's getting to the bag, maybe before LeBron's foot is to the bag. But again, what, Chris, what we've learned about these replay systems, right? The call on the field is out. There's gonna have to be enough evidence within this video replay to make this umpiring crew say, we're gonna overturn that. Now look, we've got our A team of camera operators here. We've got you every angle that you've seen thus far that they're being able to see. For me personally within this booth, I just don't know that I see enough at this point to overturn it. That's right, Jason. It's such a great advantage. I think you're seeing replay in Division I NCAA baseball games, which is a totally different scenario from even a short time ago. Here comes another look. See Monastere looking back. Well, he's clearly got the baseball before Monastere's foot is on the bag. Mm -hmm. You can see that right there. So now it's a matter of whether Monastere got there before LeBron's foot touched second base. Marcus Evans, our crew chief. And they're going to say they're staying with the call on the field. Nick Monastere out on the 4-6 put out for the second out of this inning. And that's going to get you to Billy Butler now up for the Golden Eagles. So the call stands. Looks like it was correct as well. Butler sees a breaking ball from Zane Adams down into the turf at 77 miles per hour. Senior out of Foster, Rhode Island. Has light tower power, had 23 career home runs entering tonight. And I mean that literally as he hit the light tower out in left field on Friday night, his second home run of the night against Louisiana Tech in Ruston. So the only thing that stopped that baseball from finding someone's living room in their apartments in left field was the light tower in left. Otherwise, it was coming into somebody's breakfast table. That's right. Some eyewitnesses said that thing shoot, might have went over some people's houses. 3-0 pitch. Swing and a miss from Billy Butler. The hitting Adams. coaches have been have been encouraged by his balanced approach and his balanced swings. It comes with maturity, and, and he's provided that for this offense. 3-1, and there you see the patience, right? That's a 91-mile-per-hour fastball low and away. There's probably nothing more he'd love to do than take a hack at it, but instead he spits on it, takes the walk, and gives the second base runner of this inning now for the Golden Eagles. You see his balance. You see the fact that he's not too eager with a 3-1 fastball. He's not super aggressive to the point where he can see it down there, but it shows his maturity. Billy didn't start the year in the lineup, but sat back and waited for his turn and was able to come through the team and secure a starting lineup position. Golden Eagles have scored 23 runs in the first inning. It is a plus seven margin over any other inning this season for this ball club. They would love nothing more than to get off to a hot start. You talk about a hostile environment, it would ignite the patrons of the Pete as Carson Pato takes this pitch below his knees for a two ball, no strike count. Speaking of patience, this young man, 18 walks, leads this ball club, does Carson Pato. I don't know that in years past you would have used the adjective of patience to describe Carson Chris, but it is something that has matured in his game. It is something that he has added to his game, and it, I'm of the belief it may not be paying just massive dividends in terms of runs and RBIs and production, maybe right now, but it will do so later down the road. There's no doubt about it, JB. Pato's on-base percentage is at 463. When you can climb into the upper 400s for your on-base percentage, you're doing an excellent job as an offensive producer. 
the power number, the batting average, the batting average can grow, but if you're getting on base at 463, there are some good signs there. I agree completely. Call me a believer in his approach early in this season. He's got a three ball, one strike count. Lane Adams probably coming fastball here. He does. Carson Pato slices this one foul onto the hitting facility here at Pete Taylor Park. It'll be a full count. First time Zane Adams has been in a full count to a Golden Eagle hitter today. In this bottom of the first inning, two on, two outs. Adams comes fastball again, trying to blow it by Pato. That was 90 miles an hour up in the upper portion of the zone. See the 26 pitch coming out of the hand of Zane Adams here. The lefty freshman. 3-2 pitch. Arson spoils it again. And it's a positive sign. We're not seeing so far many swings and misses, a lot of deep pitch at bats, obviously running the pitch count up, but it shows that the stuff hasn't been super overpowering so far for the top half of this Southern Miss offense. 3-2 pitch. Tell you what, people can say he's not hitting the baseball. In this booth, we don't care. He's getting on first base right now for the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. He has loaded it up. That was as good of an at-bat as you could find anywhere, Chris. Two in a row where, you know, had situations even deep in Butler's at-bat. The three. Had he not, probably wouldn't be here right now. A major league team would have came calling last summer. No but doubt about it, Jason. Davis when Gillespie, first pitch swinging. The freshman out of Birmingham, Alabama. Got to believe this one might mean a little more to Mr. Gillespie tonight. You know, there's a recruiting effort there for guys, uh, these types of draft picks or potential draft picks. When the SEC comes a calling, there's a there's an equation there to factor in. He's a draft eligible sophomore and a guy after two seasons that can make his way into professional baseball. So what Coach Rob Vaughn does when he sits down with this type of player, he says, hey, look at the average signing bonus that arms coming out of the University of Alabama that are under the tutelage of Jason Jackson get. And you're in a situation where you can come and get experience right away and in two years, go ahead and take that signing bonus. Absolutely, he'll be a draft eligible sophomore. Hot shot, hit the center, over the head of TJ McCants, off the black and gold wall in center field. Racing home from first is Carson Pato. That's a three RBI double. For Davis Gillespie, who's got a lot of power out into the center field alley, and you see it here with this swing. Jason, here's, here's the spot that obviously clearing the bags in the first inning with two outs is a huge scenario for the Golden Eagles. You talked about scoring runs in the first inning has sort of been a trademark for this, this offense early in the year. But what people may not know is that the Eagles were batting about 111 coming into this game with the bases loaded. So to be able to get off the schneid there with a huge double with the bases loaded to put runs on the board in the first inning in this ball game is major for the Golden Eagle offense. What a timely hit for Davis Gillespie, the red-shirted freshman, Seth Smith. A true freshman for the Golden Eagles has worked to a 1-1 count. Ostrander was able to stagger the offense today. Righty, left, lefty, righty, lefty, righty, all the way through, one through nine. And you can't catch a groove as a pitcher as easy when you're facing a different look each time in the box. And that could be something giving the lefty some trouble here early in the first inning. There you see what the Golden Eagles have done this season in the first inning, 26 first inning runs. Seth Smith shoots a hot shot past Gage Miller over at third base. Pushes this count to a ball and two strikes now to Seth Smith. An Alabama native is Seth.
One two pitch breaking ball to Seth Smith. This misses down and away. Two balls and two strikes now to Seth. Played at Mobile Christian High School. Tyler Fay is up and working for the Alabama Crimson Tide. High chopper going to be a tough play. Smith runs well. No throw from Bryce Eblen. Everyone safe. Gillespie moves over to third base. So the ball was hit to the right side of the infield. That was one of those turf singles, Kirtling. You just beat it off the turf, and it's really a tough play. Jason, I tried to look up to see if, if Gillespie was going to make a turn at third. As a matter of fact, if if the throw is made there to first base. You might have seen a bigger turn there and possibly tried to sneak in there after that high hop. And the nine hole coming up. So a single for Seth Smith. Fastball at 89 out of the hand of Zane Adams. That pitch delivered into Tucker Stockman. A one ground ball. Gage Miller has it off a beautiful hop. He's got it to Will Hodo. Out on the sticks. However, it can be a challenge at times when a pitcher starts to get warm and loose out there for the top half of the inning. It comes back, um, has a long inning after a, a pitcher's mound visit and these types of things to get back in the groove. So strike one's important here. Boswell comes with a first pitch fastball that's in the Coleman Mizell. A true freshman making his fifth start of this season. Breaking ball from Boswell evens up. One ball, one strike now. Mizell highly touted. You're looking at the number eight outfielder in all of the country as far as recruiting. A year ago, he was the number one player in the state of Alabama. From Hartsell, Alabama, Hartsell High School helped lead him to a 6A state title. He sees the fastball running over the plate. And this is why we see Boswell as a starter. Three pitches, he can land for a strike. In fact, last week, watching the game, his start against Mississippi State, at one point I counted 11 straight breaking balls that he threw. There you see the changeup fools him out in front. But that changeup is, is every bit as effective for him as the breaking ball is. So you see a guy that can throw the arm side changeup, okay, to the left-handed hitters, and a guy that can throw the breaking ball to both lefties and righties as well. And to match it with a fastball that's effective that plays 88 to 90. Magnusetti stands in, the catcher for Alabama. Batting in the six hole, hitting 375. He's a senior, a leader on this ball club. He lines this one foul and out of play on just an absolutely beautiful night for baseball. Slider out of the hand of Boswell here, and a big cut from Gassetti. Where they're kind of spoiling the fastball out of the hand of Boswell, tried to attack the breaking stuff. As the Alabama Crimson Tide, Gassetti attacks this slider, but he has lifted it to left. Billy Butler is there. Out about two paces shy of that warning track, there are two away. High spin rate slider that time out of the hand of Cole Boswell. This won't mean much to most viewers, but for guys and analytical nuts like myself, that was over 2,800 rotations permitted on that slider. Tight bending, had over 20 inches of run on the pitch. Whenever you see 2,600 plus, 2,800, I don't know much about those statistics, but that is good. Well, I looked up at one time, anything over 3,000 is like big league-esque. And so there's only been so many big league sliders up over 3,000, 3,100 rotations per minute. And so when you begin to approach that 3K figure, it tells you it's it's got some stuff with it right there. And so it's really cool 
to kind of watch that analytical data nowadays and identify really, really good pitches out of the hands of these pitchers. The 2-1, like that one, that's a changeup at 24.96 rotations per minute, sinking nine inches of vertical break on the pitch. Really tough is all I know. 2-2 two -two pitch, that's another one. Will Hodo, the Mississippi native out of Waynesboro, Wayne Academy, just north of this Pine Belt region, right at the top side of the Pine Belt region. Hodo takes a walk, good A-B from him. An incredible student, Jason. I remember him being a hot recruit coming out of high school with his well above 30 ACT. You could add yours, mine, and maybe Marty's in here. And we may not get to 30. We're not over it for sure, so take the under on that one. Christian Ostrander out of his so far this season. So he's a guy that can stretch it beyond just a one inning outing. He is a single baller. He sits 90 plus. They really love his mental makeup. He's a former catcher in high school. Christian Ostrander had identified him very early in his high school career. Kind of courted him, wasn't quite sure if he was gonna turn into the pitcher. Really liked him as a catcher, as you see him run 92 over the plate. In for a strike now to Justin LeBron, the shortstop. Another freshman for this Alabama ball club off to a spectacular start, hitting 367. Strong move from Allen over to first. Hodo is back in. This is a ball club in Alabama. They are 15 of 15 in the stolen base department. The fastball at 93 miles per hour. LeBron sees it for Strike number two. Oh, two check swing. Did he go? He did not. Good slider at 84 out of the hand of Colby Allen. Clearly held up. One, two, received nicely by Tucker Stockman. Made it look like a little better pitch than what it really was. It's a good one-two pitch with the fastball there. See if you can get the freshman to offer at it. He did not, and he gets to see another one. Allen makes a move back over. Will Hodo in on his belly safely? Two-two pitch from Colby Allen. Spots that just off the plate at 94. Highest velo pitch of the night in this ballpark. Colby Allen's seventh appearance this year for the Eagles. That leads the pitching staff in appearances so far this season. Full count, two outs. Hodo gets an early start, slider. Ron weeks through it, well known as Pete Taylor Park. Ozzy Pratt, a fan favorite, digs in. Nine hole hitter, slices one out of the hand of Zane Adams right out into the left center field. Ozzy's thinking two, throw comes in. Not in time. Just a great aggressive read by Pratt right there to get on second base and take the force away and get in scoring position with nobody out. And you sit there, the Eagles really love the idea of having Ozzie Pratt down in the nine hole. He was hitting in the two hole. He may have had a game where he let off. To have their shortstop hitting in the nine hole who has seen a lot of pitches so far this season and done well is a great luxury for the Eagles. Zane Adams is facing Dalton McIntyre for the first time. He begins his sad bat in with a strike. As Pratt's in scoring position, he runs extremely well. So does McIntyre, takes a big cut at the Zane Adams fastball. Speaking of Zane Adams, Chris, we gotta get this in. Speaking with Coach Rob Vaughn, I asked him, did you 
recruit Zane. He said, well, he was already an identified recruit, already somewhat committed to Alabama. Chopper here to shortstop. LeBron sends this over across the diamond, but it moves Pratt over 90 feet. He was off the bag there. They called him safe at first. So what looked routine. That's Marcus Evans, the first base umpire tonight. I missed that call, Chris. I got to apologize. It looked, it looked routine, though, Jason. You were right. Um, and it just so happened that the throw, oh, it wasn't that far off the base. Hoda would have had to. Well, I don't know. It's. I don't think it's. Alabama did not choose to challenge. They could prior to this pitch. They can't anymore. Big cut from Nick Monastere. So they're going to charge it a throwing error to LeBron, by the way. E6 in the book officially. Pratt moves over on the error. Big cut from Monastere. It's 0-2. Going back to Zane Adams really quick. This is very cool. So Coach Vaughn identifies him as a big-time target as he takes the head job here at Alabama as Adams spins one down and in. Porter, Texas is in an area that Coach Rob Vaughn hails from. He's a native Texan out of Humble, Texas. He goes to knock on the door. Mrs. Adams answers the door, Zane's mother. And lo and behold, she is a former high school classmate of the Rob Vaughn, the now head coach at the Alabama Crimson Tide, who came to Alabama from Maryland. So that's what makes the story so cool. Is Nick Monastere has sent a fly ball out, shallow left field, not taggable for Ozzie Pratt as the shortstop LeBron makes the catch. And there's one away with runners on first and third. That wasn't what the Eagles want first and third with nobody out right there, but if you're Rob Vaughn and you're trying to get a connection with your recruiting class, that is what he wants, to go knock on the door and happen to know one of your top recruits' mother. He said, Jason, Chris, I felt really good about it at that point that uh, Rob Vaughn felt that way, that Zane Adams would become a member of this Crimson Tide team. They are so happy to have him. Very talented left-hander who's got himself in a bit of a pickle, but this is what he wanted to see from his freshman. He wanted to put him in this environment tonight. That's, those were his words to us. In order to prepare yourself to compete in the Southeastern Conference, in order to kind of feel the heat of a hostile environment, you want to be able to be in spots in pre-conference play where you get that dress rehearsal. And Pete Taylor Park is that kind of place. It's the Slade Wilkes, 90 miles per hour, right above the knees, right on the inside corner. Beautiful spot for it. Wilkes takes it for a strike. So runners on the corners, one out. Breaking ball, Wilkes goes down, gets this one. T.J. McCants comes on, tagging his Pratt from third. Strong throw, but it's not in time. And that's the Four piece of hit that the miss. Eagles were looking for. Uh, to put the baseball in play and score that run from third. But I'll tell you, Wilkes went down and got it and got the barrel to a good pitch and hit that ball really hard, even to where you had to bite your nails a little bit as far as getting Pratt in. But that's textbook sack fly. It was a line drive off the bat and come in and run the velocity up there pretty good too as a guy that throws it 90 to 95 miles an hour. He's going to make a move over to Dalton McIntyre here with two outs. you got to believe Golden Eagles would love nothing more than to try to get McIntyre up to second base. Big cut from Billy Butler at a slide piece out of the hand of Tyler Fay, and it's 0-1. Another slider, McIntyre right going, pitch. throw is not in time, up the line towards first. I love the feel right there of Travis Creel to get his guy going on a breaking ball count. I think most people in the ballpark right there expected a breaking ball to be coming into Butler in that count, but it was a perfect time to steal second. Faye gets to the plate fast now, 
but that was fast on fast. Yeah, McIntyre, extremely fast. And the 0-2 off the plate here to Butler. You see what Billy Butler has done this season as a Golden Eagle. 364 average, four homers, eight RBIs. 1-2, takes the fastball low below his knees. By taking second base there, obviously you put a guy in scoring position, but you take away the short play to get the force out at second and make it tougher on that defense with two outs. 2-2 two -two pitch, did Billy Butler go around? Joshua Gilry says yes he did, and that's it. But the Golden Eagles strike black and gold. It's been their kind of style of game for the Crimson Tide. They're trying to get an answer back into this ball game. Colby Allen's gonna begin this A-B to Bryce Eblen, the ninth spot hitter for the Tide with a strike on a running fastball. Coach Ostrander gave a challenge to his staff after a Sunday game where they gave up some runs and gave up some freebies. And he was clear speaking with him today that they've been challenged. And today is going to be a statement for them if they can get out on the mound and respond to their coach's challenge. High fly ball, deep right center field. Dalton McIntyre, Carson Pato looking up. That's gone. Bryce Emblen with the solo blast, the ninth spot hitter for the Crimson Tide. Sends this ballpark, baseball out of this ballpark. 99 off his bat and Alabama on the board here against Colby oh. Allen and the Southern Miss Golden Eagle Ball Club. Wasn't quite sure if it had enough, but he got enough of the barrel on it to get it out of here, Chris. Like you said, it's the right kind of day to hit the ball in the air and elevate it to the outfield at Pete Taylor Park. Line shot out in the right field in front of Carson Pato. That's Gage Miller continuing his hit streak. He's up now to 16 games on this season for a hit. And just like that, back-to-back -back hits. And here's T.J. McCants. McCants, a big cut at the slider from Colby Allen. Christian Ostrander and T.J. McCants have dueled in this park with a lot more chips in the middle of the table. McCants, a former Ole Miss Rebel. He hit the final run scored for the Ole Miss Rebels here on that Sunday in the bottom of the eighth inning, a towering shot to right field. I was just a fan that day alongside my wife. 2022 Super Regional you're talking about, Jason? That is correct. I've never been a believer in leaving baseball games early, but if there was ever a day that I wanted to pack my stuff up and head for the house, that was quite the day that I wanted to do it, Chris. After McCants sent that ball into orbit, he is a talented youngster, a, really a big loss for the Rebels in a game by Alabama. You see him hitting in this two hole for Alabama on this season, hitting 373. McCants is a guy, he's six for six in stolen bases. He's also got six home runs. Kind of a five-tool young man. Colby Allen's got him in an 0-2 hole here. Puts the fastball just off the play. I remember him coming up, coming into Ole Miss, maybe as a shortstop middle infield. Correct. He's made the transition to center field. One ball, two strikes. Colby Allen's already given up a solo home run, but he's got a ground ball here. It's shoveled over to Pratt, who fires it across the diamond. Great response by Allen after two barrels being given up to be able to get the double play ball there. Into the shift. That was a 4-6-3. DP, you saw Monastere, who was confusing me a bit in the scorebook. He was sitting behind Cessna. But it does go 4-6-3 on the DP. Get all those bodies over there on the right side of the infield. 
But the ball was hit on that side, so I guess they're there for a reason, JB. Well, isn't it amazing, the data? It's, it's you know, there when the shifts really began to kind of infiltrate college baseball. I can't tell you the number of nights in this booth. Cliff and I sat here, almost a mesmerization of how the accuracy of the chart that allowed them to place those guys as you see the defense shift here. They're still able to do it as opposed to the big leagues who outlawed it. One, two, pitch. Big slider from Colby Allen. He'll finish. Young man in the blue shoes, better than young man in the white shoes. And Carson Pato begins this inning with a big cut on a fastball from Tyler Fay at 92 miles per hour. Tyler Fay on three pitches disposes of Carson Pato. Second strikeout for Tyler Fay. This is why this bullpen has been good. They just don't give up runs, Chris. They come in, they get outs. They're not putting people on base. They have been a weapon for Alabama through 16 ball games this season. That's right, there's some guys with some explosive stuff. I'm interested if we'll see a handful of them tonight or if they'll be trying to save some guys for the weekend series. They have used 15 guys in relief this season. 0-2, Gillespie shoots this one foul and out of play. So 15 guys this season in relief out of the pen for Alabama. Peep this, six of them have yet to even give up a run. Wow, that's strong. Breaking ball that misses up in the zone. Looked like a slider out of the hand of Tyler Fay. It's really been fastball slider mix so far. One two pitch on the way. Two seamer at 95 that touches the corner, says Josh Gilry. Davis Gillespie is fooled. Third strikeout for Tyler Fay. He struck out three in a row. Faye's impressive. You see him getting arm side run there, but he's loose and it's a deceptive arm angle, sort of a three-quarter delivery. He begins this at bat to Seth Smith with a fastball for a strike at 94. By the way, that pitch to Gillespie was 95 with some run. That fastball with 18 inches of run. One, one, Seth Smith goes down to get it right to TJ McCants. And that's it for the Golden Eagles here in the bottom of the third. They don't get a run for the first time tonight. The place is packed. No traffic in that 16 ounce lounge, my man. Those fellas get here early and they get to hydrating. As Soon as they get inside this ballpark, Kobe Allen sends a two seam fastball low and away. We begin this top of the fourth inning. Evan Slight, the batter. Chops went out in front of home play, but it hit in foul territory first. The right fielder who struck out against tonight's starter for the Golden Eagles, Cole Boswell, who went an inning and two thirds of no hit baseball, didn't give up a run. He did walk three and striking out two tonight in Cole Boswell. Christian Ostrander goes to Colby Allen. This a line shot out in the right field off the bat of Evan Slight, another base knock for Alabama. And Jason, on the previous pitch to slight, Colby Allen really had that sinker work, and I thought that was a positive. He had extension on the fastball, and it sunk down in the zone. Now, this was a slider that he threw that we had some contact on by slight, and he hit that ball hard as he should. The ball was hanging up a little bit, but I thought there was some positive uh, in the pitch previous to that when he really had that fastball sinking, which is what his specialty is. You say hard. That was 107 off the bat of Evan Slight. That was hammered out in the right field. Probably didn't do it justice with saying lined out there. More like scorch would be the better definition. Cole Mizell digs in. Allen gets this at bat to one ball, one strike with that two seamer. I got to ask you, I've been meaning to ask you, 
So you call it a sinking fastball, a sinker. In some two-seam sink, but why do we not call all two-seam fastballs sinking fastballs? You know, it just seems that some of these arms, it's, it's usually right-handed pitchers that throw that two-seam that can get some sinking action. Some balls are much heavier than others, so you got a guy that can really sink it with that two-seam fastball. The ball looks heavy. When that catcher catches it, it seems to drag his mitt down some. That's that sinker, those two-seam fastball guys. But for, for others, maybe it's not quite as heavy, and it may just go a little bit more arm side than the sinking action that you get. It may be where they put their fingers on the ball. It may be how their fingers are shaped. But the ball just seems to come out differently uh, for every, every arm. Of course, that guy that can throw that heavy ball, you tend to call that a sinker with that two seam. Christian Ostrander tells us to watch the induced vertical break on Colby Allen's fastball. That will tell you how well he is executing that pitch. Anything over eight to nine inches of induced vertical break, my understanding is, is like really good. He had 10 inches of induced vertical break on that last fastball to Colby Allen. 3-2 pitch coming here to Coleman Mizell. Well, you're talking vertically over my head there, Jason. Listen, if it wasn't for Christian Ostrander spending some time on the top step of a dugout, this stuff would be Chinese arithmetic to me on this Wednesday night. But we have been so appreciative of him revealing some of these measurements that he's looking for. Tight slider out of the hand of Colby Allen. Big strikeout for Colby, his third of the night. First of this inning. And the first out of this inning after giving up that leadoff single to Evan Slight to begin this inning. And That's a tough pitch. That's exactly how you want to throw it. Obviously, Colby Allen's going to be rooting for another one of those double play balls that he got last inning right here in this situation. You see him trying to buy a step away from Evan Slight. Again, we've told you this is a ball club in Alabama. I think it's maybe one of their more underappreciated talents of this team to this point the ability to successfully steal bases they're 15 of 15 on the year see what colby allen has done that's that's really good eight batters face six first pitch strikes fastball lifted right field this is going to touch in front of carson pato no man land slight had to hold up at second base though respect for the arm of carson pato I was surprised that he did right there, but I think that ball was hanging up a little bit on its way in, and he wasn't quite sure if that ball was down for sure. As you see, it jammed slight, slightly. It's kind of unique, Chris. I thought the ball was hit deeper off the bat initially, just on the initial call. But then when you really watched it, it kind of got to that portion of right field that, frankly, Carson Pato just could not get to. So Gassetti aboard over at first. Slight is up at second base for Alabama. Will Hodo, the Mississippi native, digs in. All the way deep in the box against Colby Allen. And it's a fastball to even this count up. Yeah, some of those balls hit off the handle are just as loud as off the barrel, but they're not going quite as far. So they'll fool you from time to time. And I think it, I think it fooled Slight on the bases there in his inability to get to third with one out. Yeah, it must have because that's the textbook ball that you would try to go first to third on, right? A long run for the right fielder to kind of a, a area that's going to make it a funky angle throw into third. And you try your best as a base runner to see where those outfielders are playing to have an idea, especially in a one out scenario there. So 2-1, big cut from Hoda. You hear the old saying, it's a it's a common coaching theme. Don't make the first out or the third out at third base. So in that scenario with one out, you really want to stretch your way to try to get to third when you can and be aggressive. I think Slight was fooled a little bit with that ball hanging up in the air zone. So. Two, two. What a delayed call there. It was. Tucker Stockman didn't need a delay. The catcher for the Golden Eagles. You see the fist pump before Gilreath's disposal. <laughs> Of Jason Gilreath, known for his tight zone. Four strikeout of the night for Colby Allen. Maybe none bigger. Hodo's been a tough at-bat this season. 
for the Crimson Tide. Slider here, shot to the second baseman, says Smith. Ground ball out over to Gillespie. And the golden. That conversation with Rob Vaughn today, you can see why Greg Byrne hired him to be in charge of this program. You're talking about a guy who was Big Ten Coach of the Year at the University of Maryland. He just won me over with our conversation. You can see the dynamic that makes him up that's going to be special as a baseball coach and why, probably why this ball club's off to a 15-1 and one start, frankly. I think it's an accurate description to say he's a solid dude, and I think Alabama found a solid dude to come and lead their program. Obviously, a lot of trust is put into any head coach at a Division I SEC institution. Tyler Fay gets the ground ball off the bat of Tucker Stockman. Eblin will put Stockman away. But we talked a little bit beforehand, you and I, Jason, about, you know, history, uh, not being afraid to go outside the mold. And Greg Byrne obviously um, has done that with several hires at the University of Alabama. But for, for Coach Vaughn to come down here to Alabama and be a guy who has had one other head coaching job, in Maryland at the University of Maryland and be 36 years old to come and get this job is quite impressive. Chopper here, Ozzie Pratt trying to beat it out. Can't unassisted, quick put out. Will Hodo steps on the back. There's two away. And one more nugget on Rob Vaughn. Maybe the coolest nugget, Golden Eagle fans. Sit up in your seat, you'll appreciate this. He played the same travel ball as former Twins greats here at Southern Miss, Michael and James Ewing. Two icons, but I believe James had the home run in Omaha. Michael did, Mike right? Mike did. That's right. Uh, two former Golden Eagles that were here during during my time at Southern Miss. Uh, staples, program guys, great players for Coach Palmer when Coach Scott Berry was the assistant at the time. The final year that Coach Palmer was the head coach in 2009. Both Mike and James were seniors on that team and uh, led the team to play in Omaha, Nebraska. And um, and in that game, the second game of Omaha, Mike Ewan hit a big home run against the University of North Carolina. Dalton McIntyre had sliced one into the left field corner. Did he make the catch? He caught that the ball. Did he hang he on? It. Yes, he did. A diving catch, fifth inning. Colby Allen extending out for this Golden Eagle bullpen, and he quickly begins. Bryce Eblen with a fastball for a strike. Oh, one, right back up the middle, but Ozzie Pratt was there. He has gobbled it up, the shortstop for the Golden Eagles, and he gets it across the diamond. That's the positioning. Chris, that's just not a normal spot. I mean, you're at double play depth. No doubt about it. He hit that ball hard. It gets through a standard infield positioning. Pratt's in the right spot right there and catches it on an easy one hop to get the out at first base. Christian Ostrander has said there are no more secrets in college baseball. Roller that sneaks through. I guess you position one right, and then the next one finds its way through. A single that time for Gage Miller. Second hit of the ball game for Miller. He continues his hot start. He's going to be up over 475 on this season at his next at bat. And that's a deal where he's a guy that sprays it all over the field so you get more of a standard setup defensive look for for Miller there and that ball gets through even though it's not hit quite as hard as the first hit as the first batted ball was this inning by Eblin. This is a funky game, isn't it? It's it's it got sure some is. weird bounces for sure. T.J. McCants, you see what he's done so far tonight. one from Allen. That was a slider that Gillespie fields in foul territory. Gillespie, a young man we had a conversation with today. Asked him, I haven't had a chance to talk. Davis and I, those red shirts, you spend a lot of time with those guys in the dugout being able to ask them questions. Really drew close to Davis Gillespie a year ago. And just simply asked Davis, how's first base treating you over there at first? And I said, just don't give me the Scott Hatterberg answer 
for Moneyball. An imperfect red shirt freshman response. He said, who's Scott Hatterberg? He had to school him up on some, uh, I guess that was early 2000s baseball. Yeah, it was probably before Davis's time. One, two, that slice foul. We're gonna get Carly McAvicka, the director of baseball operations for Southern Miss next bus trip for this club. Why can they not watch Moneyball on the bus? That's That's gotta be a staple. Rounders used to be our staple, right? There you go, that's right. You remember those bus trips? That was a- Coach Palmer favorite as well, I he guess. He loved that movie, didn't he? That's right. Um, you know, you think about, I guess they'd be watching Moneyball and Coach Keller Bradford would be watching somebody playing his dad that's on right. the TV that's in right. that movie. That's, maybe that gets a little awkward for Keller, we're not sure. One, two, pinch to McCants. This is Slice fouling out of play. You see McCants just battling this box. There's a two-strike approach that he's using with the foot down early, shortening his swing. Of course, he's a guy, you know, that leads the team in doubles, has seven, has six homers in this young season, hits in the two-hole for a really explosive lineup, and you see his physical posture shortening up with two strikes. Allen got the best of him there, though. Climbs the ladder at 92 miles per hour, fifth strikeout of the afternoon for Colby Allen. And Allen battling through, stretching out this outing a little bit, trying to eat up as many innings as possible. Had to navigate through some trouble last inning and the inning before when he gave up the solo home run, but hanging tough and trying to get some outs and log some innings for this Golden Eagle pitching staff. There's the young man who made that beautiful catch at the bottom of the fourth inning, Ian Petrutz, the left fielder for Alabama. 0 for 1 officially tonight with a walk. Hitting 311. Takes this pitch from Allen in for a strike. Allen has covered three innings tonight. A five hit baseball. Just the one run has touched him thus far. That was the homer from Bryce Eblen back in the third. He has a good move. He'll buy an inch away from Gage Miller. Miller has not been the stolen base threat as the leadoff hitter for the Crimson Tide. It's McCanns, who Allen just got swinging a moment ago, who has been that stolen base threat. McCanns, six for six in the stolen base department for the Crimson Tide. Here's another look at that foul ball by Petrutz. Snuck and got the tip of his helmet there. Petrutz with the great play in left. And some of the guys that may have played in this ballpark in the early 2000s, as we mentioned, didn't have the luxury of the padding on that wall down the left field line. No, they did not. The one, two, great read by Miller. He gets up to second base as that ball was buried in the turf and it skipped just away from Tucker Stockman. Well, this base running 101. See Miller out of the corner of my eye really break the moment he recognized Stockman was going to have to reach for the baseball. Reading down angle with two outs, with two strikes in that scenario, getting to second base, take the force away and be in scoring position. 2 2, buried in the turf again, blocked up beautifully by Stockman, six strikeouts. Boy, how effective was Tyler Faye tonight? How about this? He threw a total of 26 pitches covering two and a third innings of work, and 21 of those 26 pitches were strikes, Chris. He was a strike thrower, really kind of quieted this Golden Eagle offense, retired nine in a row. Yeah, and that's he hands the kind the baseball of, away. That's the kind of that's the kind of situation for the Eagles where you're Somewhat re relieved to see a new face trotting out to that pitcher's mound. I'll be honest, I was as shocked as anyone to hear new pitcher into the ball game for Alabama. Aiden Moza goes wide. Nick Monaster, who's 0 for 2 tonight with reaching on a fielder's choice and popping out to shallow left field of the shortstop, Justin LeBron. Moses spins a slider in 
at 86 miles per hour to Monaster. Does it again at 85. Another slider. Monaster grounds this one out to short. LeBron gets his throw across. One away for Southern Miss. So he missed with the fastball on the first two pitches of the at-bat, Kirtland. He comes slider, slider, slider to induce that ground ball off the bat of Monastere. Slider here. Wilk shoots this one towards the Golden Eagle dugout. This one goes well wide. Nice stop by Gassetti. Air picked that one out of the air. One one to Wilkes. He has hammered this. One eleven off the bat. You're going to need a new baseball here at Pete Taylor Park. That's a great job by Wilkes, kind of working himself in a situation where he saw a change up up. I was wondering if Moza was going to show a change up to the lefty Wilkes. Well, he did, and he might not be too happy with that result. Great job by Wilkes staying down on his legs and delivering the barrel to a change up. Four hundred and thirty two feet off the bat of Slade Wilkes and Billy Butler takes a big cut. To a fastball at ninety four. Slider ground ball. Justin LeBron knows the drill. He'll get it across the park and over into the mitt of Will Hodo. There's two away. Like watching LeBron field ground balls. He's got a soft set of hands on him. Um, vacuum so far today, obviously. But a nice looking young player with good hands and kind of whips around. You see, he doesn't use the arm unless he has to. And that'll be what gets that freshman through a 56 game college season. Carson Pato, a shake of the noggin, says that one didn't catch the plate and it did not. It leaks off for a ball, 1 0. Moza comes tight slider. They appeal to third base. Ray Gregson says he did not go around, and it's two balls and no strikes now to Carson Pato. Moza comes here tight to the knees to Carson Pato. That was a good, good changeup. Yeah, there. it was. Fastball here at 95. Boy, Moses got some stuff. That one running about 12 inches as well. Eagles happy to have Wilkes going a little bit after the weekend. They say tone down the front side leg lift a little bit in order to see the baseball a little bit longer to be able to slow things down, toning down that leg kick. He took some pitches that were close this weekend that ended up being balls that could have got him in trouble earlier in the year. 3-2, this is rocketed towards second base, gobbled up by Bryce Eblen for the third out of the... Which will throw the opposition off track a bit, especially after coming in after a righty. But that fastball slider combination that he has creates a lot of tilt. And he's a big body that can come in here and change the pace for the Eagles on the pitcher's mound there. So Colby Allen out. In comes Chase Adams in digging in. Now is Evan Slight, the cleanup hitter for the Crimson Tide. He sees a pitch for a ball here, and it's 1-0. and up. Ostrander likes the idea of being able to throw a lefty at this left-handed heavy lineup with Alabama having six out of their nine hitters this evening. 
batting from the left side, at least in this starting lineup. 2-0 pitch, that's the fastball out of the hand of Adams at 90 miles per hour. Slight, the team captain, he is awarded that number three. And Slight has just sent one out into the right field roost. Another home run for the Crimson Tide tonight. Their second home run of this ball game here in the top of the six. He wears that three for ownership, toughness, and grit. And oh, by the way, he can hit two. Nice piece of hitting, left on left. Sent it out to the outfield roost in a hurry. That one left here at 106 miles per hour to its new home out in the right field roost. A solo home run, their second of the night. Gonna have a pinch hitter here as well for the designated hitter, Mizell for Alabama. Mason Swinney, chopper back up the middle. Ozzie Pratt gets to it, to his feet. Is his throw in time? No, it is not. Play was a lot closer maybe than Marcus Evans making the call pretty quick and easy, but it looked pretty close here. Great play by Pratt to hop up to his feet. Probably didn't have quite enough time. It was a good stop by Gillespie maintaining contact with the bag. Again, keep in mind for you folks at home, that's a third baseman converted to left fielder, now converting to first base, kind of operating over there for Southern Miss. By the way, before that home run for Alabama, through five innings, that one run that they had, ground ball here, Seth Smith bobbles it. Going to be an error in charge of the second baseman. Everyone will be safe. Swinney is up to second base. Gassetti is aboard over at first. Smith just got a little hurry getting ready to shovel that baseball to Ozzie Pratt. You could see him sort of lift before securing that baseball. Once again, the shift put him in the right spot. Um, you get those balls that are hit right at you. Sometimes those are the hardest to handle because you don't get to see it from the side vantage point. But I think he got a little bit ahead of himself, excited about that double play ball coming into his mitt. If you're looking for the sack bunt, we point you to the screen for Alabama. Just one sack bunt this season. Boy, this scream sack bunt here for Will Hodo. But as you see, he has no intentions of Squaring around, it evens up a ball and a strike. Real quickly, I, this is a note for Alabama. That one run is the fewest through five innings this season, Chris. That's how good they've been. The previous low was two runs at UAB, but they would go on to score seven runs over the final four innings to win that ball game. That's how explosive this Alabama offense has been this season. A home run here, two aboard, nobody out. Chase Adams punches out Will Hoda. First strikeout for Chase Adams and a big out for the Golden Eagles here in the top of the sixth inning. That's right, Jason. He really needed that one there and, and kind of tied him up, maybe surprised him with that fastball to be able to sit him down on the strikeout. You know, you go back to the idea of bunting once again coming in 16 games in, having 30 home runs and a boatload of doubles for the Alabama Crimson Tide offense. Ain't ready to lay one down yet. Their only sack bunt this season was laid down by Evan Slight, who hit the ball out of the ballpark to begin this inning. Here's Josh LeBron, Justin LeBron, excuse me, he yanks this foul. Got in front of the fastball there. O2 pitch from Chase Adams, nipping with the slider low and away. Yeah, 
Really a great 0-2 pitch, to be honest with you, to put it one ball and two strikes. That's right. Absolutely. Chase Adams kicks and delivers. Slider down and in. Huge block by Tucker Stockman back behind that dish. See what LeBron has done with runners in scoring position. There's Swing the back the foot slider. There. Back foot slider, one of the toughest pitches in, in baseball. If a lefty can land that against right-handed hitting, he has a lot of success. And you see right here that, that breaking pitch coming in, dropping it right on the back of the dish there, making it tough on the freshman once again. You know, it's kind of funny you point that out for a left-handed pitcher to right-handed batters. You hear the terminology back foot slider. A lot of the times it's right-handers into left-handers that don't enjoy that back foot slider you're trying to locate down to the zone. You don't see it much from the lefties into right-handed hitters. Any what? reasoning why? Not necessarily. Sometimes lefties aren't necessarily the best at spinning it. A lot of right-handed pitchers can really spin that thing. And you see in college baseball, lefties lefties that spin it come at a premium. So you talk to pitching coaches like Coach Jackson in the Crimson Tide dugout and Coach Ostrander in the Golden Eagle dugout. If they're out on the road recruiting and they see a lefty that can really spin the baseball from a breaking pitch perspective, that's a guy that's going to rank ahead even if their velocity hasn't quite gotten there yet, that's going to be a guy that they're going to follow because it's a lefty that can spin it. Lefties are known for having good change-ups and maybe not having the most velocity, but when you can find a left-handed arm that can spin the breaking ball, you've got something. Boy, Jace Adams all of a sudden spinning it well. That's over 2,400 rotation per minute. You see Bryce Eppman just asking for the location of that pitch. It's two balls. Two strikes, patrons of the Pete. Stomping on the steel here at Pete Taylor Park. 2 2 pitch from Chase Adams. Fastball lifted high in the left field sky. Billy Butler has camped underneath it. Pace shy of the warning track. Chase Adams. That's right. Um, here's a left handed pitcher that has been seen up to 95. Uh, his fastball is going to sit in the low 90s. And here's a guy that's coming into a. To a to face a lineup that once again has some lefties coming up here in the top of the lineup for the Golden Eagles. He's going to begin this inning facing Davis Gillespie, the first baseman. It'll then turn left-handed to Seth Smith. Gillespie began the scoring barrage for the Golden Eagles all the way back in the first inning, a three RBI double. Clearing the bases. Really set this tone inside Pete Taylor Park. Gillespie, a guy that has great splits against left-handed pitching, by the way. 0-1, that is spotted on the inside corner. 0-2, that's the pitch. If you're going to face him with a left-handed arm, you got to land that fastball underneath his hand. Heiberger did a great job. This is all speed in the turf. And that's the other piece, right? We were building off of that from last inning, talking about lefties getting to their glove side with the back foot slider. Gillespie sends one out into right field. Evan Slight is there. He's made the catch. There's one away. Well, you're tough enough as it is if you're a left-handed arm that can run it up to 93, 4, and 5 miles an hour as that last fastball was 95 miles an hour out of his hand. But if you can get inside to those right-handed hitters, you're that much more effective because you're getting your pitches to the glove side. You match that with that slider we're talking about on the back foot. You're going to give right-handed hitters fits. Seth Smith swinging at the first pitch, a fastball out of the hand, a Heiberger. Chopped foul. We sit in the bottom of the sixth inning tonight in a 5-2 midweek baseball game here at Pete Taylor Park. Chopper to Will Hodo, who will step on the bag, the first baseman for the Crimson Tide. There's two away.
So Tucker Stockman, tonight's catcher for the Golden Eagles, getting another opportunity and a start. It has been a heavy rotation, a loss in Odom and Tucker Stockman to begin this year as the catchers for Southern Miss. And I wouldn't, that's a great job extending this inning here. I wouldn't be surprised if you see a pinch runner just for that reason alone. You mentioned the depth that Southern Miss is using behind the dish. Potential to see some defensive replacements with the lead late in the game, but Great job hitting with two there by Tucker Stockman. Finding the ball up, he can drive to the right side and extend this inning. Well, you really could see him emphasize getting those hands through the baseball. Ozzie Pratt is plunked here at 94 into the shoulder. You put a guy in the stretch right there. So Tucker Stockman getting in that position to be able to extend the inning and get a new guy in the box also puts the opposing arm in the stretch for the first time all inning. Facing a left-handed batter, got into a spot here where he plunked Pratt to get on first base. Big cut here from Dalton McIntyre, fooled a little bit. From that pitch from Matthew Highburner. McIntyre slices one to left field. That's rolling into the corner. They'll wave Stockman around third. Ozzie Pratt's diving into third base. McIntyre with another single for the Golden Eagles. Raising that average, his second one of the night. You know, McIntyre's just been red hot lately, finding barrels. You remember a couple innings ago, um, Got robbed of extra base, uh, extra bases where he hit the ball out to the to the left field, deep left field corner. Comes back up and finds a barrel and scores a big run for the Eagles here in the sixth inning. That was a pickoff move here by Matthew Heiberger, and he overshoots it. It's going to begin to send Ozzy Pratt from third. Dalton McIntyre will hold at third. And it's 7-2, Southern Miss. Throwing air charge to Matthew Heiberger. Got to believe. Watch, watch the move here, Jason. Okay, it wasn't as much of a balk as it looked like in live action there. Whether it was a balk or not doesn't matter because the result of the play was that the ball went into foul territory and allowed the run to score, and everybody advanced. Really was a good move by Matthew Heiberger. It was just a throw that just couldn't be handled over at first base. It's one of those, if you're Will Hodo over there at first base, you may have taken for granted. It looked as if he was going towards the plate and may have taken his eyes off of Highberger. Eh, got a little got a little trouble with the base runner coming back into first base. The ball ends up going, going off into the distance, allowing a run to score. Monastere sees this pitch on the inner half. Josh Gilreath kind of motioning towards that Crimson Tide dugout. One two pitch on the way to Nick Monastere. He has skied this one somewhere up near where SpaceX just came from, and it's down onto the turf here at Pete Taylor Park and caught into the mitt of Will Hodo, but not before. The Golden Eagles get two runs. Marty English, he is really counted upon by Christian Ostrander, a freshman arm on the back end of this pin. You see his numbers, Chris, he's been really good. You know, we see a couple great freshman arms come in out of the bullpen for Alabama tonight, and Southern Miss goes ahead and says, I'll see your freshman and, and raise you another. Here's a freshman arm in McCarty English that has had some big game action so far in this young season, but also has gotten out there in some other positions as well. I'm not sure the numbers are reflective exactly of what he is going to be for this team this year. Oh, 100%. He's navigating through a year. Remember, this guy was pitching a year ago in high school baseball games as a starter. Now you're being tasked on the back end of a collegiate bullpen 
They love his savviness. They love his athleticism. And they love his metrics as well, which are maybe something that you can explain a little bit. But that extension, there's a fastball at 94. That extension that he has says that his fastball, his stuff plays up. Yeah, they say his 94 can tend to look 104. As you see, he doesn't get the call here on that first pitch, then locates a fastball low. Two balls and no strikes. Here's a fastball that runs over the plate. It's one, two, and three in this Crimson Tide order to begin. This is Gage Miller, who's red hot. Two for two tonight with a walk. He's been aboard all three times. Two, one, check swing, pop up. Seth Smith, the second baseman, makes the catch. Kind of climbed back there from the 2-0 count to the leadoff hitter for the Tide. Gage Miller in the box, a guy you don't want to go down 2-0 to. McCarty English finds a way to climb back into the count and get a check swing, easy can of corn for Seth Smith there at second base. This is a Crimson Tide top half of this order that has some teeth. Lowest batting average right now from the top four hitters in the order, 317 from Ian Petrutz. That's getting it done at the top half for this Alabama Crimson Tide. McCants rolls this one out into the gap. McCants can stretch this as well. McIntyre, strong throw, but a double for T.J. McCants. Boy, we've seen some excellent base running tonight. Ozzie Pratt turned that one ball into a double and then watch T.J. McCants getting out the box and recognizing it here. That's right. you got to recognize maybe off the bat, let's not assume anything as a base runner and, and hot dog it about down the line, but one big piece to the field here, when you learn your playing surface, when you come in during batting practice as an opposing ball club, you realize, hey, this is turf out here, but this is turf that's playing a little bit slow as compared to a natural surface. We even talked to the coach and staff at Southern Miss about it during BP today some, and how, hey, what's different about this turf maybe versus other fields? And it's, hey, our turf can play slow from time to time. So a good base runner re recognizes that and tries to take advantage of a long ground ball single like McCants did right there. Cardi English came with a pitch at 88 miles per hour at the knee of Ian Petrutz here. He's got a no ball, two strike count, and a slider that Petrutz spoils beautifully. He gets down in just a piece of it. And it's wild too. McCants hits that hits that C and I ground ball base hit, turns it into a double in the scorebook. And once again, with the shifts of today, we continue to talk about if Pratt's playing double play uh, position, Smith, I'm sorry. You get into a spot where maybe that's an easy four to three out, uh, but McCants is able to turn that into a double as the ball got deep into the outfield. Yeah, and look at him now. He's 90 feet away from the third run of the night for Alabama, but a nice play here by McCarty English. A look back the second. McCants was gone as the moment it made contact. English gets out over to first base, and here's Evan Slide who homered his last trip up, and there's a slider from English at 78 miles per hour. Nice get me over change of pace. I would try to project or predict what Ostrander may call next, but I'm smarter than that. Slider here. Slight just gets a piece. You can see that body language out of English. Looks like he means business when he's getting the play call on the pitch comm. This is spoiled, shot down past third base in foul territory. You know, there's pitchers that look like starters. They command their body language like starters. And then there's guys that get out on that bump that just look like they belong in the back end of the bullpen. McCarty English has all of that body language and more that he belongs in the back half, high leverage, almost that he relishes these kind of moments. Two outs, one on, 0-2 count. Another good slider, another better job by Evan Slight to just get a piece. Those are hard sinking sliders. 30, 13 inches of sink on it. Tried to 
back door. This one couldn't get it to bite. Couldn't get slight to offer either, and it's 1-2. Marty English rocks and fires here and paints it right above the knees of Evan Slight, says Joshua Gilreath. Boy, this is collegiate baseball at its best in the middle of the week. We bring you into Hattiesburg, Mississippi tonight. Jason Baker, Chris Kirtland, we are so happy you are here. Seventh inning stretch done here at Pete Taylor Park. Three, four, five are due up in the Golden Eagle order here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Zane Probst comes to the plate, breaking ball off the plate to Slade Wilkes. Here comes the meat of the USM lineup. The meat of the lineup has been able to be stretched out a little bit with the emergence of Billy Butler. Will skies one on the infield turf in foul territory. Gage Miller does a beautiful job to call for it, make the catch. And out goes Slade Will. Long run for the third baseman. Gage Miller probably came some 85 plus feet down that baseline to get to that baseball. Here's Billy Butler. Offering at the slider from Zane Probst. Butler hammers this. Let's see if he can try to get the second here, Jason. Ball in the left field corner. I'd also not be surprised if Ostrander wants to get a pinch runner in for Butler late in the game and work their defensive substitution for the eighth and ninth. Two off-speed pitches in a row to Butler, but this second one hanging up high, and Butler did what he's supposed to do with that hanging breaking ball and drove it into the left field corner. Gabe Broadus will come on to run. You've been in that dugout with Christian Ostrander, kind of a, he was thinking ahead before he even made the change. That's Gabe right. brought us into pinch run. You know, looking at the, the lineup here, when you get late in the game and you know you have a Gabe Broadus on your bench to be able to bring in and go to third base and slide Monaster out there to left field, it improves your defense in the outfield. It helps you out a little bit on the infield as well. Plus, probably the, the bigger move of it all is adding some speed out there at second base and scoring position to try to push that insurance run across. 7-2 baseball game, one out. Billy Butler just doubled. That's Gabe Broadus. That's pinch running for him. Zane Probst comes with a fastball over the dish to Carson Pato. Fifth pitcher of the night for the Crimson Tide. Probably safe to say they'll have another as well before tonight is done. There's been action up pretty much from the first inning on tonight for Alabama. They went with freshman starter Zane Adams, who went an inning and two-third, a talented, highly touted left-hander. And it's been upon this Crimson Tide bullpen that's been really good. The veteran Carson Pato has worked another full count. How about this? Third time in four at-bats, Carson Pato has worked it to full tonight. 3-2 pitch, Pato. Is he thinking opposite field? T.J. McCants is at the wall. He looks up, it's gone. They call him tuna bombs in Hattiesburg, and Carson Pato has just left Pete Taylor Park. That's right, Jason. I mean, you called it. He's been getting deep in counts all night long. He got himself to a point where he has himself a full count pitch. The fastball was up about belt belly button high, and he deposited it over the left center field wall. The three, four, five hitters in the lineup, as we said, the meat of that lineup has scored going into that at bat four of the seven runs this game for the Eagles. Now that would be six of the nine runs for the Golden Eagles, and that meat of the lineup, three, four, five, has been stretched out with the emergence of Billy Butler, who got 
the double to be able to set up that Carson Pato at bat. And I would also point you to this young man who got it all started tonight for Southern Miss, Davis Gillespie with a three-run double to begin in the first inning as Gillespie fouls this one back. I want to go back to the Pato home run for a moment. I have called every home game of his Golden Eagle career, plus or minus one or two. When he is hitting the ball to that part of Pete Taylor Park, I can tell you what's coming, and it's going to be a red-hot Carson Pato. When he's going that way with the baseball, for power too. it's trouble for teams. That's a great call, Jason, because that's something we hadn't quite seen yet this year. Gillespie is single out in the left here. And we saw maybe in Ruston at Louisiana Tech, this Golden Eagle team really got hot offensively. They went out on the road and scored crooked numbers in all three games of the weekend. Then, as well, that weekend, we I think we saw Slade Wilkes sort of get hot and hit some long balls and do some things. Bill, Billy Butler did more of the same. But to get, to get Pato going in this scenario tonight, to see him hit the ball for power to the back side, it, it, it really could be a great sign of things to come. As it for 210 pounds, Morris making his fifth appearance of this season. He has worked so far five and a third of innings pitched. Chris, this Alabama team going Johnny Holstaff here to try to piece this ball game together, and they're facing a Golden Eagle lineup that's beginning to find some identity. That's right, Jason. I think after Faye came out, the Golden Eagles may have been a little bit relieved after he retired nine or ten in a row. But since then, this Eagle ball club on the offensive side has been able to hit some long balls and score some runs, forcing the Crimson Tide to go to the bullpen yet again. So Austin Morris on, toting a 3.37 ERA so far for Alabama. They're 15-1, and one, ranked 14th in some polls nationally, as high as 12th. They will face Seth Smith here with one out and one on. Gillespie singled. He's over at first base for Southern Miss just a moment ago. Another loud barrel for Gillespie, something that this coaching staff for USM has been wanting to see out of him. And I'll tell you what, Jason, walking up to him at batting practice, you know, maybe that uniform doesn't do justice. He is a big boy. He is. He's a young man that's got some pop does Davis Gillespie, hard worker. Look, he was last year at a position in third base behind an all-timer in Danny Lynch. He got to sit behind Danny every single day taking – BP and fielding baseballs off the fungo through BP. Austin Morris doesn't get the call on that fastball. It leaked inside. Three balls and one strike here to Seth Smith. It they, goes a long way to sit behind a vet in your red shirt year and be able to learn some things. Hot shot picked by Will Hodo. He'll get it up to LeBron at second base. His throw to Austin Morris not in time. Seth Smith runs well for the Golden Eagles. That was a heck of a play from Will Hoda. For sure. You, know, you talk about sitting behind a veteran. That, that guy in the third base box for the Golden Eagles, Travis Creel, will be the first to tell you how much he was able to learn sitting behind Brian Dozier. When he started his collegiate career, Travis Creel was that red shirt, learning from a future big leaguer at practice every day. In, when you sit behind a vet as a freshman and you're maturing, coming into your own as a freshman ball player on a college campus, playing at a high level, it can be a very positive thing. Tucker Stockman sees a slider from Morris, now a running two-seamer over the middle of the plate. It's 0-2 to Tucker Stockman, who had a single his last A-B, scored a run as well. Off the single by Dalton McIntyre. That was last inning in the sixth inning. 0-2. Oh, That's a beautiful pitch out of the hand of Austin Morris. Completely fooled. Tucker Stockman, but not before. To Rob Vaughn's credit for the Crimson Tide,
He didn't desire to be down seven here in the top of the eighth, but he wanted to see what he could find out about his ball club. He said it right in a hostile environment, put them in this kind of environment to see how they would respond. And right now they're down 9-2 facing a freshman arm in McCarty English that delivers a pitch here low for a ball. Yeah, essentially 15 out of your first 16 games at home. Cade Snell, the pinch hitter, underneath the mitt of Davis Gillespie out in the right field. They're going to try Carson Pato, and Cade Snell has got up to second base for Alabama to begin this top of the eighth inning. Yeah, that's what Ostrader is looking for, is to try to get the ground ball. So on McCarty English's behalf, he made a good pitch and got a ground ball. As far as Davis Gillespie goes at first, yeah, it's an opportunity, you know, maybe late in a game with a lead to put a defensive replacement out there, but it's also an opportunity for the Golden Eagles and Southern Miss to let a guy who has limited experience at first base remain out there and see more game action. Matt Gassetti has lifted this shallow right field. Carson Pato calls off. Seth Smith makes the catch. There's one away. And so far tonight, this Golden Eagle pitching staff has responded to these moments of adversity as well. When William you Hameter is going to be the pinch hitter for Alabama. I love, I will say this, and I don't care what transpires out of this microphone next. I love leaving Davis Gillespie out there, trusting in him, building of the confidence. Look, it's, it's a position, as they said in Moneyball, I'll use the reference, right? How hard is first base? Ron Washington says it's extremely hard. You take him out of there, and in my opinion, you send a message that, well, we think you're good enough for so many innings but we think there's a better glove behind you. Instead, leave him out there, pumping with confidence. I get the ball was a, it looked routine. I'm still waiting on whether the official rule is gonna be a hit or an error. Besides the point, you leave him out there, you pump him full of confidence. He's a red shirt freshman swinging the bat well. There are such bright days for Davis Gillespie. He makes this one here, steps on the bag for the second out, Chris. And that's what it comes down to, Jason. He is hitting the ball right now. This is a spot that the Eagles are looking to generate some offense. So if Davis Gillespie is getting at bats and producing offensively, you gotta find ways to have him on the field and you gotta be able to build experience at that position when you can. So coming out with a seven run lead in the eighth inning of a ball game is a great opportunity for him to be there and get that game action that he hasn't had yet. There has been a plethora of youth out there tonight. This young man, a freshman here, Justin LeBron, the freshman shortstop for Alabama. He's facing a freshman arm in McCarty English. There's two on here, or rather one on, two out in the top of the eighth inning. I feel like every time we, we talk about a player, it's a freshman. Justin LeBron skies one, center field. Dalton McIntyre, the center fielder, right in front of the A. First on time. Pete Star. You see him on your score bug, ranked as high as 14. And a swing here from Ozzie Pratt. He has lifted it foul and out of play. College baseball is growing. Mind you, it is the ability to put it on ESPN+. Plus. There is just round-the-clock consumption of this marvelous sport we know of collegiate baseball. But I will got to say, it has infiltrated social media with burner accounts. There is one that has been begging for a mention. That burner account. This is slapped out in the left field. Long run from Ian Petrutz who made the defensive web gem of the night. He makes that catch to retire Ozzie Pratt here. In this burner account through social media, it's a rankings account. He is dying for a mention. Been begging for one for two years. So Rob, this is for you, big guy. He has the Alabama Crimson Tide ranked as high as seventh in the country by some burner account named Rob's Rankings. He has been asking for this.
for over two and a half years. He was just completely despicable with me that I didn't give him the credit of having this Crimson Tide ranked in the top 10. As you see, Dalton McIntyre continue his hot hitting. He gets up to second base with a double to the gap. By the way, Chris, Rob's rankings, also the only poll to have the Golden Eagles ranked right now. Oh, well, interesting. I'm new to the college baseball NCAA D1 social media burner account and so on and so forth. They Pe all deserve their time, don't they? Nick Monastere sees a pitch here from Austin Morris low for a ball one and up. I'm not exactly sure if you're if if you're if you're entitled to have an opinion if you don't <laughs> put your actual name with it. Oh, Chris, everybody on social media is entitled to those opinions, don't you know? You're exactly right, I guess. This is such a wonderful sport. The magnitude, I mean, there was today, there were social media mentions just of all the marquee matchups happening across collegiate baseball tonight. People just clamoring that they couldn't wait to watch and include me in that bit, right? Com this has been good stuff. This has been an action-packed baseball game, albeit heavily into the favor of the Golden Eagles at the moment here in the bottom of the eighth. Strong move to second base from Austin Morris. McIntyre has three or more hits in three of the last four ball games. He's at second base. Three hits tonight for him. Two singles and a double for Dalton McIntyre as Monaster whiffs at the 82 mile per hour slider out of the hand of Austin Morris. Golden Eagle fans are getting used to seeing that Dalton McIntyre on base. And he's really been the shot in the arm that this offense was looking for a couple weeks ago. And I think that these offensive numbers in runs scored is heavily corresponding with his hot streak beginning and his spark plug effect that he's had on the offense. Austin Morris gets his second strikeout in relief. This one of Nick Monastere, really good slider on the inner half. Yeah, it looked like it backed up on him there. And uh, sometimes that backup slider is a highly effective changeup style pitch. Get some swings and misses with it. Morris misses down and in to Slade Wilkes who popped out in foul territory. His last A.B. back in the seven. That was off Zane Probst. Morris a long look. Boy, they understand who Dalton McIntyre is, certainly. They're kind of paying him attention. It's rare you go many games in between seeing multiple pickoff moves to second base. But McIntyre's speed, really and truly, it's of great importance to try to buy any amount of, of coverage you can over McIntyre, keeping him maybe without the ability to get to home with a ball hit to the outfield. But I got news, the way he runs, if he gets a jump, may not matter how many pickoff moves you go back to second base with. Morris strides out. This is the slider that he struck out Nick Monastere on. This one doesn't catch the plate. And it goes to three balls in a strike here to Slade Wilkes. Look back to McIntyre. This is in the turf. Slade Wilkes is going to take a walk. see who the Eagles send up to this. It's brought us the sub from the inning before. It is. Gabe Braunis came in to pinch run for Billy Butler after Butler's double later came around to score on the two-run home run from Carson Pato, who sits on deck. Brought us a big cut at a 91-mile-per-hour fastball. Off the end of the bat, Morris will pick it up with two outs. It's over to first base. Grant secures it there. It the is a great spot for him to just continue the groove and try to stay on top of these Crimson Tide hitters. This will not be easy. It'll be 9-1-2. and two. This is Bryce Eblen who went around on the pitch. As 
Ray that Gregson. elevated fastball is something that I think English can institute into his repertoire, may, potentially even more so than he does already. But you can tell, if you can spot it at the letters there, it becomes a very effective pitch. 0-2, then he bites that slider down towards the turf. Eblin spoils that one away. No balls, two strikes. Eblin struck first for Alabama back in the third. A solo home run tonight to right center field. That was off Colby Allen, who worked three and a third innings of relief tonight for the Golden Eagles. 0-2 pitch out of the hand of English. This one goes way wide. One-two pitch, fastball. This one misses high, and the count evens up. Two balls and two strikes. Eblin's one of four seniors in this lineup for Alabama. Chops this one over to Davis Gillespie. Be misplayed off the bit, off the kind of base of his glove, and rolls over towards McCarty English. An error for Gillespie. Another challenge for the Golden Eagle pitching staff to overcome maybe not exactly what they expected with a, with a ground ball getting hit. But English overcame the similar situation last half inning. Excuse me, in the eighth, in the seventh inning. This is lined by Gage Miller out in front of Dalton McIntyre out in the center field. Alabama holds up Al Eblin over at second base. Age Miller with his third single of the night. It's hard to take an average that entered into this ball game at 460 and climb it 10 points, but somehow in some way Gage Miller has done that tonight. Chris Kirkland is average up now to 470 at the moment. He's a hitter, Jason, in a good spot heading into conference play. TJ McCann swings through the English fastball. So two on, nobody out. McCants fouls this one back, and it's 0-2. Golden Eagles do have an arm up in their pin. That's J.B. Middleton, the right-hander. 0-2 pitch, back foot slider out of the hand of McCarty English. One, two pitch on the way. That finishes off TJ McCants. Yeah, it looked like he threw him a change up there and was able to get him fishing. Once again, watching the freshman respond to the unfortunate error to lead off the inning. And it looks so far as if McCarty is up for the task. But here comes Ostrander for a visit. So he's out to talk with his freshman relief pitcher in McCarty English. Draws the infield in. Believe he's making a call, and he is. He's making a call to the Golden Eagle bullpen. It'll be J.B. Middleton. Gonna try. So Middleton from the stretch here. Two on, that's Eblin at second base. Ian Petrunt sends this one foul. Middleton kicks. Petrunt chops this into the turf. Deep play for Broadus. His throw is not going to be in time. Everybody will be safe. It's a single for Ian Petrunt. The trampoline turf will get you every once in a while, although if you're on a natural surface with that same hit, it might have snuck through the way the shift is playing. Broadus really got enough on it to get it across, but Trutz was just moving really well. 
That's one I might have just put in my back pocket. But no harm done yet. Puts Middleton back into the windup. One oh, that. that spots up at 97 miles per hour here to Evan Slight. And then you, then you follow up that 97 with an 86 mile an hour changeup. That's tough, really tough. One, two, this is ripped. Fair ball inside the line all the way down to the right field corner. This should clear the bases for Alabama. Thinking triple on his mind is Evan Slight and he'll have it. A three RBI triple cuts this lead down to nine to five. Middleton went with the slider there and you'll see it's somewhat elevated. And once again, what do good hitters do with hanging breaking balls? We've seen it a couple times tonight by both sides. Ball gets driven into right field to clear those bases. You got to think, too, he was sitting fastball. This is lifted to left field. Back That's looking up out. and gone. A two-run home run. Off the bat that time of Cade Snell, who came in to pinch hit for Coleman Mizell back in the eighth inning. He sends a two-run bomb out to left, and it's a 9-7 ball game. And things just got a little bit tighter here inside Beat Taylor Park. I mentioned a minute ago, Chris, you have led collegiate programs as a head coach in baseball. I said it, Rob, for the rest of the year. But once again, this game's not over by any means. You have a scenario here where Coach Ostrander goes out and, and checks on Middleton. The pitching change did not occur and it looked like Monastery got stuck out there in center field having a conversation with Dalton McIntyre. Time had to be called so that he could get back to his position. Uh, that was a situation where Ostrander went out to say, hey, guys, let's check back in. Yes, the bases just got cleared away, but you're still winning a baseball game. We have two outs to get. Matt Gassetti is up. Their catcher tonight, he's kind of had an eventful night. Pair of flyouts, a single, and also has reached on an air back in the sixth inning. Well, you see what Alabama has done. Five runs in this inning, first time to score in the ninth inning this season. Of course, a lot of that stat's got to do with they played a lot of ball games at home at Thomas Sewell Stadium, and they have put to bed a lot of folks prior to that bottom of the ninth inning. But either way, it just shows you that they've gone into the ninth inning quite a bit with a lead. But tonight, they're responding right now in the top of the ninth. But J.B. Middleton is a strike away from securing this win for the Golden Eagles. Line shot out at Nick Monastere. It's down. Inning stays alive. It's a single for Matt Gossetti. And here's Will Hodo. Actually, check that. It'll be a pinch hitter for Hodo. It'll be, should be Max Grant up for Alabama. See if Christian Ostrander's making a move. He has popped out of his Golden Eagle dugout. And he is. He wants the left-hander I believe he's going with Cross Sively coming out of the Golden Eagle pin. Sively's a guy really tough on left-handers. He's going to be facing Max Grant, a lefty, who came in for Will Hodo. As a defensive replacement last inning. Lefty on lefty, tight in the top of the ninth in Hattiesburg, Mississippi tonight. Sibley begins the A-B in with a strike. I might have said a moment ago a strike away from 
getting out of this one. There's only one out here in the top of the ninth inning. A three-run triple off the bat of Evan Slight, followed right back up with a two-run home run by Cade Snell. The breaking ball from Sively misses. It was a close pitch. These two pitches have been around the zone for Sively coming out of the pen, which is a positive sign. 1-1, one, one, fastball leaks high here at 87, and it goes to two balls and a strike. This is a funky game, but it is a game of 27 outs. Golden Eagles trying to find a way for out number 26 and 27. Fastball from Sibley's in for a strike, two balls and two strikes here. of the Pete stomping on Pete Taylor Park. 2-2 pitch, off speed, ground ball, charging his Russo. He's going to take the out here to Max Grant unassisted. And now there are two away here There's in the, the top of the night. There's the baseball finding the defensive replacement <laughs> once again as we so often see. That was a good job by Matthew Russo, really to charge that baseball and not try to do too much with it. You have to go get it. Sibley wasn't quite over there yet for a flip, so you got to go get it, and the play there was for the tag. Right into the glove of Gabe Broadus. A line out ends this one tonight in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Justin LeBron sharply hit right into the mitt of Gabe Broadus and the Golden Eagles have win number 11 on this season. They go to 11 and six as you look at this last swing for Alabama. Great job by Sibley coming in and, and putting out the fire, so to speak, and getting this ball game over with. Of course, the final score looks a lot different than the way it looked all game. And I'm sure that the Eagles are pretty excited to be able to get out with a win. Two pitching masterminds and Jason Jackson and Christian Ostrander exchanging pleasantries. That's Rob Vaughn as well, wishing the 